So I've used iPhones for the last 10 years of my life, basically. You could call me an Apple sheep, whatever you want, but I've got a serious question at the moment. Have Apple's cameras actually gotten any better? Like in the last five to six years, we haven't really seen a ton of changes in the actual hardware of the cameras and the phones. Like if you look at it, they have about three cameras and they've kind of gone open megapixels and resolution, but like, are they actually better? Do they look better? So I've got five generations of phones right in front of me and we'll be putting them in a giant comparison to see if Apple is actually scamming us and the cameras are literally the same. I'll be putting all five of the phones through a series of tests to see which comes out on top. And the best part of all is all of this will be a blind test. So I won't know which phone is which. And by the end of this video, we will know if Apple is scamming us or not. All right, starting with our very first test. So this one is a walking test. And I've been able to, by some miracle, to make this rig right here out of a PVC pipe and several phone mounts, as you can see right here. I drilled through the pipe and then jammed the phone mounts in there and then actually put toothpicks right here to keep them in place. Engineering. Okay, we're doing a walking test. We're gonna put them all into video mode in the one-time zoom. This is gonna be without action mode. Let's see if you can actually tell the difference. All right, I'm just walking normally. Okay, but this is what they look like side by side and I'll be ranking each of them in order of how good they look in the criteria that we're testing them. And the worst one will get one point and the best one will get five points. But here's the footage side by side. It actually looks really hard to tell them apart just from looking at all five of them. Like there was no signs to tell me which phone was which. I honestly couldn't even tell. So I had to dig in and basically put these all side by side again and again and again to figure out which one was actually better. And this is how I ended up ranking them. Phone one gets five five points for being the most stable and handling the colors and the changes in the exposure the very best. Phone four gets four points right behind phone one for having just as good stabilization and good colors. Then phone number two gets three points and that was because the stabilization wasn't as strong but the colors were good overall. Phone three gets two points for having lesser stabilization but still having better colors than well phone five which gets one point and that's for having the worst stabilization and the worst colors. No idea which phones these are still. All right let's go into test number two. Now this this one could be more of a dead giveaway. And that is because only two phones that I'm using have action mode. And that could be a dead giveaway in the running test. All right, so now I'm running down the street in normal mode. I'm gonna turn on action modes on all the phones that have it. So here's what they all look like side by side. And I know that right away for me, I can tell which ones have better stabilization and which ones don't. But after extreme analysis of putting them all side by side, this is the scoring I came down to. Phone number four gets five points for having the best stabilization and the least amount of grain in the video. Phone number one gets four points also for having good stabilization, but the grain was just a little bit more. Phone two gets three points for having less motion blur and better colors. Phone three gets two points for having a little bit more, but still better than phone five, which gets one point and having the most shake and the worst quality video. Making the leaderboard scores look like this. All right, and now for test number three. This one we're looking at the overall performance in low light. So the newer phones that have larger sensors should perform much better, they gather more light. But right away, looking at all five of them side by side, it looks like phone one and four are slightly brighter than the other three. But let's rank them based on my extensive analysis. Phone one for the dark mode test gets five points for having the most clear and bright image. You can see the face just a little bit better. Phone four gets four points for having the second best, slightly more grain, but really not bad. Phone five gets three points for having a brighter image more than the other two. As for phone number three gets two points for being just ever so slightly better than phone two, which gets one point for performing overall the worst in the night test. All right, now for test number four. And this is the final video test of the day, but we still have all the phones on the rig and we'll be doing a front facing camera test and see which one is the best. This one is a little bit more tough because it's hard to get all the phones in the same frame pointed towards me because they're kind of on a straight line and my face is one spot. So it was a little bit tough, but once we got all the five cameras going and we stared at the footage for a very long time trying to figure out which one is the best, here's how the rankings go. Phone number two gets five points for having the best looking front facing camera, making my face crystal clear. Phone three coming in second, getting four points for being almost as good as phone two on the face. Phone four getting three points for having good stabilization and the background wasn't overexposed. And phone five getting two points for doing well, but the colors were just not as clear and it was a little off. And phone number one gets one point for having the worst colors on the face and overall least appealing video. These are our rankings now. Let's switch things up.
All right, now for test number five. Now we're getting into our picture section where we're taking photos with the cameras. And this is where I think things will get a lot more interesting because truly I don't believe that they've changed that much, but we'll see. But we're gonna start out with a portrait test. So this is my wife that I spontaneously asked to participate. So give her some hype in the comments for being a good sport. But we're looking at the detail in the face and the bokeh in the background on this one. And this is what they look like all side by side. And after examining each photo, this is what the scoring I've come down to. Phone number three gets five points for having the best looking image having the best bokeh and detail in the face and hair. Phone number two gets four points for having the second best looking but slightly lesser than phone three, but still very good. Phone five getting three points for having a good image but not quite as good bokeh effect. And phone number one gets two points for having a sharp image but slightly more dark and not quite as clear. Phone four getting one point for having the least amount of bokeh and being a darker image. Putting our scores at this, that just made things Interesting. All right, now for test number six. Now for this one, we'll be doing a max zoom photo test. So this is where things are gonna be a dead giveaway, just like the running challenge, because the older phones have not as good zoom capabilities as the newer ones, which will give them it away. But here's what we're doing. We're taking a fully zoomed in picture in the streets of Vienna, Austria, and we're gonna see which one has the sharpest and the most zoomed in image. This is what all the images look like side by side. And after extensive comparison, here's the scoring for this round. Phone four gets five points for having good zoom and the sharpest image. Phone one gets four points for being the same zoom, but just slightly less sharp. Phone two getting three points for having a bit more resolution, but still not quite as much zoom. Phone Phone five gets two points for having good exposure and decent resolution in the zoom. And phone three gets one point for having the darkest and lowest resolution shot. All right, and now for our seventh test, we're gonna be seeing how all the phones perform in night photography. The phones with bigger sensors should perform better because they should be able to gather more light, but we will see in the results. So I was able to just take a picture of the Vienna sunset as the sun is going down right out my window. And this one was actually very hard to decide which was better. This really put me through a battle examining all of these images. But this is the scoring I've come down to. Phone number four, in my opinion, had the best looking night shot, giving five points. It was just bright on the buildings and overall just high in detail. It was very good. Phone two gets four points for having the second best and also doing well in the lighting. Phone three gets three points for still having a sharp image, but not quite as sharp as the other two. And phone one gets two points for having a darker scene and less detail. Phone five coming in last with one point, having the least amount of light in the image and the overall lowest quality. Putting the scoring at this. All right, now we're at our very last test and this will be the indicator on which phone comes out on top. This one's a bit more random than the rest of them. I'm shooting a road shot with the camera side nearest to the ground. And this is what all the images look, look like side by side. And this one's also very tough for me because it's just like, how do you actually know which one's better? But after looking extensively at these photos for a long time, this is what I've come down to. Phone one had the very best image with the best control on the focus and that gives it five points. As for phone three, gets four points, also for having good focus and overall image control and quality. Phone four getting three points with a decent focus and sharp image as well. Phone five getting two points for doing a subpar job on focus and decent image. And as for phone two, getting one point, having the least appealing image. All right, and now for the phone reveal. I wanna tell you which phones are which, if you haven't guessed by now. Phone one was in second place and that is the iPhone 15 Pro Max with really good performance. Phone number two coming in third place was the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And this one actually surprised me because it was the fourth oldest phone. Number three coming in fourth place, which is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Interesting that it performed worse than the 11 Pro Max. Phone four coming in very first as the iPhone 16 Pro Max. This one performed exceptionally well and surpassed all of them. And this leaves the phone five, which is the iPhone 10s Max. In the end, I do think they're all very, very good cameras. I think there are small differences that put them ahead, like the iPhone 16 versus the iPhone 11 or the 10s, like the image stabilization, the zoom that do put it ahead. Now, are these bad cameras? No, absolutely not. It does seem like the cameras are getting better. We've seen that through this blind test. Like I didn't even know which phone was which, but I could tell just from the image quality. So yeah, anyways, that was awesome. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe and peace.